ladies and gentlemen, an apology. For whatever reason, I had the microphone set way too high, so there is a whole lot of distortion on this and the next videos. My apology. Cinema's Tom Cruise is with us in chat. Okay. Hello, he, Tom. Yes, he, he envies your lagless adventure. In any case, so... <laughs> Um, uh, gonna, gonna put this on YouTube, just warning you ahead of time, is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Go All for right, it. I've been meaning to run you through this adventure, and I, I just have never done it, so... Okay, um, let's start. How long is this going to take? Because I've only got an hour. It's gonna take probably more than an hour, but we'll just save our space. Spot. Okay. Okay, yeah, but it will probably take, like, maybe two of these episodes. Okay. All right. So let me hit start. <clears throat> the dame walks into your office without knocking, and boy, does she look uneasy. She stares at you with piercing gray eyes and asks, Are you Sam Stone Morrow, the private detective? What do you say, Chuck? Do you say yes or no? Hmm. I'm waiting for the screen to catch up. Oh. Uh, all it is is a picture and text. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I will close the screen as to not be distracted. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to say yes. Oh, okay. Let's be Sam Stone Morrow. Sam Bone Marrow. She says... I saw your name and office address spray-painted onto a stray dog outside, and I came straight to you. The only option is, they laughed at me when I spray-painted the dog, but who's laughing now? It's free advertisement <laughs> that moves. Now, first things first, why don't you tell me your name, sweetheart? <laughs> to which she answers, my name is Vera Calypso, says the dame. See, you say, now we know each other, Miss Calypso. Now we can do business. What's your business, Miss Calypso? She says to you, I'm afraid I'm being blackmailed, says Vera Calypso. Now you got two options. You can ask who's blackmailing her, or you can ask who's behind this nasty bit of business. They're both pretty much the same thing, but it's, it's your choice. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Am I playing the part of Sam? Because if I am, I'm going to yeah. tend to go overly polite. Okay, you are totally Sam Stone Morrow. Okay, because that's, that's who I am as a person. Okay, so you can say who's behind this nasty bit of business, or who would want to blackmail a doe-eyed dame like you. Uh, definitely the first one. <laughs> Sounds grim. Who's behind this nasty biz bit of business? His name is Benedict Kane. He's a very wealthy man. A billionaire, in fact. We used to be close, and during that time, he managed to get his hands on photographs of me writing the words, I'm glad the Titanic sank on a sleeping police officer. If the picture gets out, it's curtains for me. I'll have to go to jail for the rest of my life. Will you help me get it back, Mr. Stonemorrow? <clears throat> now wait a minute. Uh, you say, now wait a second, Miss Calypso. If Kane is so wealthy, why blackmail you? No offense, no offense, but alley cats like you and me don't exactly have the kind of dough to make a billionaire like Benedict Kane wet his mouth. Oh, it's not the money Ben's after. He wants something else. You see, he's recently bought a Komodo dragon egg from Indonesia for $250 million, only to find out that the Komodo dragon eggs need to be incubated for no less than seven months. Ben says that he release, he'll he release the photograph of me unless I sit on the Komodo dragon egg until it hatches. That's such a long time, and I don't want to do it. You, you have to help me, Mr. Stonemorrow. Well, you say, Miss Calypso, I'd love to help you. But your story doesn't your your story doesn't check out. You see, it's missing one crucial piece of information. 
And what's that, Mr. Stonemorrow? What's in it for me? <laughs> Name well, your not price. Very polite. <laughs> no, it's Mr. Stonemorrow. You're only choosing the most polite option. Name your very price, very nice. says Calypso. Now you have an option here, Chuck. You right. can act. You can ask for eight thousand dollars up front, and eight thousand dollars when you bring the picture back. Or, you can ask her to dump a handful of loose cigarettes on the front porch every morning for the rest of his life. Mm, I'm a polite man, but I got to pay the bills. <laughs> uh, so, so... So the money. <clears throat> oh, yeah. All right. No, if you're good at something, never do it for free. That's, that's good advice. Of course, cigarettes are expensive, too. Well, yeah, especially now. Did you hear about the new tax in Oklahoma? <laughs> I don't you smoke, so I'm okay. You gotta pay an extra dollar fifty a pack now. <laughs> Cigarettes are up to like seven bucks a pack, and I don't smoke, but Damn. now I'm never going to start. <laughs> All right, so you say it's eight thousand up front, and eight thousand when I bring you back your pictures. You've got yourself a deal, detective," says Vera. She seems calmer now. Calm like the tired ghost or a calm doctor. She starts to leave your office, but she stops at the door and turns. And if you're looking for Benedict Kane, you should try the Grand Picador Theater at 3. There's a new play opening there called The Hog Brothers Eat Each Other. Kane will be in a luxury skybox at the matinee showing. There won't be a better time to get him. Okay. You've got two options. You can just say, okay, Picador Theater, got it. Or you can ask more about the play. What do you, what do you say, Chuck? Oh, I, I gotta know more about this cannibal play. <laughs> Tell me more about this play, <laughs> you say. <laughs> the Hog Brothers <laughs> Eat Each Other is the latest play in the beloved Hog Brothers franchise, oh, says sorry. the dame. <laughs> it's the sequel to the theatrical classic the Hog Brothers murder a wizard, and the Hog Brothers run over a benevolent king, which I've encountered. <laughs> it's amazing. You say, that sounds amazing. I'll be sure to swing by the Grand Picador Theater around three. I'll see you soon, Miss Calypso. Call me Vera, she says before disappearing through the door. <laughs> so, you have two options. And I think I know which one you'll say, but I'll give you the option. You can either silently yeah. make a mental note that the Dane's a real knockout, uh, or you can episodes. scream hubba hubba out loud. Which will it be, Chuck? There is oh, I am four, subdued. Four other <laughs> I, am, I am very subdued. You silently make a mental note that this Dane is a real knockout. It's just a Sounds good. And with that, the Dane is gone. You're alone in your office now with nothing but your nothing to keep you company but a double of cruel boys bourbon you've nursed down to less than a single and a, the smoldering remains of a overtaxed cigarette you just can't bring yourself to snub <laughs> but that's the way you like it friends are just well-meaning distractions especially now that you've got a case okay you got two choices you can either say Let's get started and go straight to the Picador Theater, or you can launch into a brooding monologue. Oh, man. I love a good monologue. All right. Let's do this. Launch into a brooding monologue. I should have gotten something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, so baby. If, if you wait a second, I will read the monologue. Just so, let it come up on the screen. Uh, it's going to take 30 seconds, so... Oh. Let yeah. me go ahead and continue. Go for it. My apologies. No problem. You walk to the window and look over the city. You light up a cigarette and launch into a brooding monologue. This city doesn't run ele on electricity. It runs on corruption. And sometimes I wonder if I'm the only sap paying the utility bill. Will you continue the brooding monologue or just go to the theater? Yeah, let's go to the theater. Okay, that's enough brooding for now. It's I time to go to the Grand so Picador Lawrence Theater. <laughs> Isn't this something? <laughs> it's okay. time to go to the Grand Picador Theater and wait for the matinee to begin. No sense waiting around. You take your cases like you take your bourbons. 
whenever you can get them and polish it off as fast as possible. You toss a revolver and you toss a revolver into your gun pouch and leave your office. My gun pouch? Your gun pouch. Soon you arrive at the Grand Picador Theater. You better go buy a ticket to the Hog Brothers eat each other. Okay, you got an option. You can either go to the box office and buy your ticket, or you can try and sneak into the theater by building a giant wooden horse and hiding inside of it. I'm making $16,000 off of this deal. I can afford a ticket. If she pays. <laughs> well, I'm assuming she's already paid 8000 up front. Oh, no. oh my god, you're right. And she left without paying. I didn't read anything about it, her paying. That oh. cheating bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the box office to buy your ticket. You walk up to the box office. The man, wear, the man working there is wearing a t-shirt that says, I went hog wild at the Grand Picador Theater. One ticket to the Hog Brothers eat each other and step on it, you say. Oh, Mr. Stone Morrow, we've already have a ticket waiting for you, says the man at the box office. He gives you a grin so big you could eat dinner off of his teeth. Ah. <laughs> Mr. Vera Calypso took the liberty of reserving you a seat this, after, this afternoon's matinee. The box office guy hands you a ticket. Now you can thank him, or you can say nothing and just glower and take your ticket. Well, I gotta be polite. You gotta say thank you. Alright. Thanks, buddy, you say. Now put your teeth away, or you'll poke your eye out. Yeah, he, he obviously has the Julia Roberts syndrome. Yeah, the horse teeth. I know what you're talking about. All right, you have your ticket. You better head inside now. The play is going to start any minute. We go inside. You take your seat at the Grand Picador Theater. At the corner of your eye, you can see Benedict Kane sitting in a luxury skybox, just like Vera said he would be. And the lights go down, and the curtains come up. A hush falls over the audience. The Hog Brothers eat each other is about to begin. Okay. <clears throat> You can either stay here and watch the play, so you can keep an eye on Benedict Kane, or you can skip the play to snoop around in the lobby. Oh, man. Okay, this is the first tough decision. Yeah, it is Those tough. Both, I, I, just I, want to t I just want to mention, as somebody who's experienced two Hog Brother productions now, it's it's incredible. Are they? <laughs> I'm I'm half expecting something that's going to end with yeah, the aristocrats. I, I will so, give away the ending. The Hog Brothers eat each other. Eat each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. If you've already given away the ending, then I'm going to go ahead and snoop. <laughs> oh, you make me sad. Okay, okay. We'll we'll you, watch you, the play. We'll watch the play. It's only because I enjoy doing a uh, a New York accent with these. Actually, a, a really bad Jersey Brooklyn accent. Okay, sit down. The Hog Brothers eat each other. A tragedy. Enter Gordon Hogg. He looks out over the audience and speaks. Gordon Hogg. Here I am, Gordon Hogg, the eldest of the three Hog Brothers. I love my brothers too much. I just can't get enough of them. In fact... I only like doing three things, looking at my brothers, thinking about my brothers, and dreaming about that insane doctor is, uh, that an insane doctor is sewing my brothers and me together. Why? You can keep watching, you can look around the theater, or you can go snoop in the lobby. I'm gonna go snoop. It's okay. Snoop. It's time to snoop, my friend. I apologize. As you make your way out of the theater, you accidentally bump into a man sitting next to you. Do you mind, he says, as he's scribbling something in a notebook. You're not allowed to see what I'm writing, because it's very important and good. Now you can ask him just who the hell he is, or you can say, hello, what's your name and occupation? Hello, hello. All right. Okay, hello, what is your name and occupation? My name is Peter Leroy. I'm a critic for the Nautical Stage magazine, the only theater magazine written entirely by former sailors and general audience of non-sailors. Perhaps you've read my column? <laughs> you can say that you haven't, 
Or you can say, oh, right, you're the guy who gives every single play five anchor rating no matter what. Um, the first one. Can't say that I have, Pete. Well, it's very popular. Now, if you don't mind, I need to finish writing notes. Why don't you leave me alone? Now, you can shrug and walk, shrug and walk out of the theater, or you can scowl and walk out of the theater. I will shrug. Eh. Got to stay in character. Yeah. The, the nicest detective. Sam Stonemorrow doesn't have time for unpleasantries. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this is the greatest play you have ever seen, you figure that <laughs> <laughs> you figure that you better go investigate the lobby. What? Better leave out the highbrow theater to the, or better leave the highbrow theater to the rich men in their glass neckties and their upscale ladies in their mink smocks and oyster beards. I'm sorry, beads. Sleuths don't watch drama. Sleuths solve cases. You glance around the empty lobby. You're on the lookout for anything that seems amiss, but your ears slurp uh, your your ears slurp up sweet clue juices your eyes were craving. You hear muffled <laughs> cries for help coming from somewhere nearby. Oh, you can at investigate the cries or completely ignore them. Oh, I've got to investigate a damsel in distress. Possibly, there's no telling yet. It sounds like the cries for help are coming from behind this door. Slowly, quietly, you approach the door. You're not sure what awaits you behind this door, but you don't care. You're thirsty for peril, and you'll drink up whatever danger comes trickling out of this room. You kick the door open. Very neat and good. This closet has a tied-up man inside of it. As a pri private detective, you see these things all the time. You know exactly how to handle this. Either you can untie the man, like a strong hero who drinks per bourbon, or you can apologize to the man for interrupting him while he was in the middle of being tied up in the closet and then leave. Mm, I'm meeting a lot of people. This is interesting. It's all in the detect uh, detective's life. Does it say anything about the tied up man? Do I get a description? Uh, He's I mean, a guy a in a costume? suit. No, he's a guy in a suit. He's got some really nice shoes. And he's got what looks to be a piece of newspaper covering his mouth. That might be duct tape. Okay, I'll untie him. You untie the man like a strong hero who drinks bourbon. What's the worst that could happen? You stoop down and untie the man. He stands up, looks you right in your clue-finding eyes. You were expecting gratitude, but strangely, this guy doesn't seem too friendly. Hey, thanks a lot, fella, says the man in a voice so cold you could store salad in it. I have a gift from you, as a token for my appreciation. You say, and what might that be, buddy? All of a sudden, the man reaches into his gun pouch, and you find, and you find yourself... <laughs> no, pause. Time out. Time out. Gun pouch. What? Isn't that where you keep your gun? It's where I keep my gun. And I keep my gun in a fanny pack, but that's not the point. Gun that, pouch? Gun, gun pouches are like fanny packs, only they hang on your side. And uh, although originally used for holding gold coins for adventurers, uh, detectives now have repurposed it for guns. Oh, okay. No, no holsters in this universe. Gun pouches for all. And yes. they keep the bullets just loose at the bottom. Of course. That, where, where would you keep them? It would be ridiculous. You reach into your gun pouch and pull out a couple of bullets and flick them in. <laughs> this guy looks like he's got a fancy leather Glock gun pouch. You find yourself eye to eye with the death-spitting mouth of a revolver. That, that's not a revolver. Now you can say, whoa, now, buddy, what exactly is going on here? Or... You can say, well, that's a fine sh shake of a whippet. Wait a minute. I'm freeing you from a tight spot. Scrape. Hang on, I'm not reading this fast enough. Uh, you can either ask him politely what's going on here, or you can give a convoluted way of asking politely what's going on here. Oh, I gotta go convoluted. Well, this is the fine shape shake of a whippet. Darn you, Chuck. 
<laughs> One minute I'm freeing you from a tight scrape, the next you've got me within kissing distance of your bullet holes. <laughs> what gives, friend? <laughs> but yeah, if you... It's, this is kind of light. I'm afraid this was my plan all along, says the man. You see, I work for Benedict Kane. It's my job to trap detectives to pretending to be in trouble and then killing anyone who comes to help me. I make $50,000 a year to do this job. That's weird. That's weird. I make I make $50,000 a year to do this job. Yeah, I guess that is grammatically correct. Which is a huge amount of money. You should have known better than to come snooping around Benedict Kane. I'm afraid your investigation ends here. Goodbye, detective. Now you can either say, goodbye, gun person, or you can try to buy some time by asking if you can smoke one last cigarette before you die. I don't smoke. You know how expensive those are? Uh, Sam Stone Morrow smokes. Remember, he pulled out and started smoking a cigarette while uh, go going into a brooding monologue while a cigarette on stub was still in his ashtray in his office. See, this is why he needs $16,000. Or just a handful of cigarettes thrown on his porch every day for the rest of his life. Apparently, they're all unread. You have a much better memory than I do. Uh, I've, I've read this a couple of times. <laughs> okay. Um, I will smoke one last cigarette, I suppose. All right. All right, the man says. But don't try any funny business. Now, you can reach into your pocket and light up a cigarette, or you can try some funny business. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a liar either, so I'll I'll light a cigarette. All right, you reach into your pocket and light up a cigarette. With a steady hand, you light up the sweet-smelling billow stick. You fill your lungs fill with life-giving black fog that you crave, and you begin to focus. Your mind is clear, and you start to formulate a plan to get out of this sticky situation. Cigarettes or Stan or Sam Stone Morrow's spinach. Okay. Hey, buddy. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> hey, buddy, <clears throat> you say. Before you kill me, I have one last requ request. In my religion, I can't get into heaven unless someone is giving me the middle finger when I die. Will you give me the finger while you shoot me so that I can get into heaven? I don't see why not, the man says with a sneer. <laughs> Here, hold my gun so I can give you the finger. <laughs> the man hands you his revolver so that so that his hand is free to flip you the bird. Now you can use the revolver to shoot your attacker, or you can give the gun back so the man can kill you and you can go to heaven because you saw the middle finger right before you died. Oh man. That, Choices. This, this is the second big choice that I'm not sure. Because uh, I am very polite. I want to give him back his guns, but I don't want to be shot. Uh, well, I will warn you, this is kind of an important decision you're making here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot him. Okay. I've got to shoot him. I've got to earn <coughs> my keep. With a hero's grimace, you pull the trigger. You, sh you shoot the man a lot of times in the head, which knocks him unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be sleeping like a baby for a few hours, and by the time he comes to, you'll be gone. You light up the cigarette and walk out of the room without looking back. With the gunman thoroughly defeated, you return to the lobby. It looks like this case is more dangerous than you would anticipate it. You'd better confront Benedict, Benedict Kane and get those compromising, pho compromising photographs of Vera Calypso back. God damn. Baby, can I have another drink? <laughs> Take your time. Order when you're ready. Why didn't you get a drink before you started? I should have got a drink before I started. Go get a drink. You all can right, edit yeah. this out. All right. I'll be, I'll be right back. Oh, my God. I can hear you for like 10 seconds. Yeah, give me a sec. Oh. <laughs> 